Are you guys ready for your next comedian? Oh my god. She's an angel. And let me tell you, uh, she, when I first got into comedy, um, she has been a badass bitch in fucking comedy. And uh, I saw her and I was like, I want to fucking, I want to be that lady. She's amazing. And she is so, she has the most interesting life. And I love her so much. You guys, please welcome to the stage, Jen Adams. Cheating. But how bad would it be if you're the guy that went up for the modeling job and had a beard and then you didn't get it? 
That'd be even worse, right? They'd be like, you know, how about if you just like maybe covered your entire face next time? I'm just saying, if you have a beard and you got rejected, maybe you're really ugly. <laughs> Fine. You guys feel bad for guys with beards. Whatever. I don't care. Uh, did you enjoy the first half of the show before intermission? <laughs> yeah, me too. I loved it. Um, I, uh, I'm not going through a breakup, you guys. At all. <laughs> I, I'm happily married. <laughs> and I was in the green room with these two, and they're like sharing stories, and I was like, I feel really left out. <laughs> so I called my husband and picked a fucking fight with him. <laughs> Uh, so we say. <laughs> These are strange times, you guys. Strange times. All right, I have an issue going on uh, because in a, in a comedy club, usually the stool is high, the microphone is straight, and I can look over and reach my drink and see my cheat notes. Uh, and, uh, and I know it's not professional to have notes, but, but here's the problem, you guys. I've always used notes because um, I don't have really good memory recall because I uh, did a lot of drugs when I was a teenager. <laughs> I did. And I feel like, why should my dreams have to die just because a lot of my brain cells did? I don't feel like that should be the case. So I have notes. Does anybody have a problem with that? No. No. Perfect. No. 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 Okay. So we're going to go ahead and look at the notes because I don't make it very far without that, without just mumbling and then crawling into the corner and rocking fetal back and forth and then nobody has a good time, so fuck okay. it. I am 43 years old, and I am at the point in my life where I'm starting to have aha moments. You know, because when you're a kid... Aha moments? Aha. I'll explain. Don't worry. You don't have to know what it means. It's all right. I should have sent some notes ahead. But, um... It's okay. I will explain. So when you're a kid, you think life is a certain way. And then you grow up, and you look back, and with your 2020 hindsight, you see what was really going on, and you go... Oh, uh -huh. right? Those epiphanal, like, oh, moments, right? I've been having a lot of those lately as I look back on the first half of my life, because I feel like I'm at the midway point right now, you know? And so, like, I mean, for example, when, you know, I was raised in New York City, and my mom was single, she had four kids. We have a big Italian family, lots of family coming over all the time, right? And then I got older, and I was like, oh, we really didn't have that many uncles. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. I get it, right? I, my grandmother, when I was a little kid, she taught me like stuff women don't pass on anymore. She taught me how to hook latch rugs and sew and knit and crochet. And like the other day I was thinking about it and I was like, oh, I worked in a sweatshop. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> That explains why grandma was Korean. I get it. <laughs> right? That really messes it up, right? Because I have fond memories of being like, no, grandma saw, I can't sew another American flag. My fingers are bleeding. <laughs> why are we sewing all these Shangja labels into our towels? That's weird, right? <laughs> that, that part of the joke is totally unbelievable, you guys. There's no white kid working in a sweatshop. Like, come on. Put some more passion into it, man. Like, that's how it usually goes. Ivanka needs her Nordstrom line. <laughs> oh, good, we have Trump haters in the audience. Right, perfect. You guys are going to love me. You will. That sounded sarcastic, but it wasn't, really. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I grew up poor. Anybody else grow up no money at all? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the kids used to make a lot of fun of me for it, um, and, and that sucks. Like, it's bad enough that you're poor, but then you're catching crap on the playground for it. But the kids would always try to be really clever about it. You know, they'd be like, you're so poor, you can't afford to pay attention. You ever hear that before? Like, you're so poor, you can't afford to pay attention. And that didn't bother me until one day we couldn't afford my Ritalin. <laughs> City, you guys. I'm a long way from home right now, uh, so I was learning some shit. Really soaking. Wow. That's, uh, like, I'm, like, I'm learning stuff. That's not soaking. Is not a real thing. Yes, yes, now, were you a Mormon though? So it is best. Oh. Okay, you Nobody guys can fight in the parking lot that way. Or you could just soak together. I guess. Whatever you want to do. Have a soak. 
look in. Like, it'll be like the 60s, only more oppressed, I guess. I don't know, that's weird. That's a weird thing to do. It's so weird. Saudi Arabia is not that far away. So talk away. about what you have. Saudi Arabia is extremely far away. That's such a, I, I, I just feel like this area did a lot of mushrooms before the show. Like, you're just, like you're somewhere else, and then you just pop in like a caterpillar on the momos. Wow. Oh, okay, thank you. You live near Mormons? Okay, whoa. Well, we're, yeah, right next door, Saudi Arabia. I mean, I lived in Saudi Arabia. It's the same thing. Okay, wait, so you're saying Saudi Arabian people are the same as Mormon people? Ah! Very similar. Okay, very now before we go further in this conversation, I want you to know I've stopped my very well prepared and tested act so that you and I could discuss this in front of a room full of people that paid to see me. <laughs> sure that you're prepared to do your part of it. She's if not, I can really do my job. Has anyone else here lived in Saudi Arabia? <laughs> well, no, no, we're, it's not, it's, we're not, we're not challenging whether or not you live there. Like, no, it's fine. I'm just doing the similarity to Mormons as Saudi Arabia, because it's no, very totally similar. different people. Okay, totally we, we're going to break out into discussion groups in a minute, you guys. Just, we are, there'll be a, a reading portion, then an art portion. We're going to move some leaves to women's vaginas, because nobody should see those in either place, you guys. Gross. Oh, All right. Here we go, Jack. Hey, my family is up front. They will fight you, okay? Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Uncle Mary has a mean left hook. Okay? Yeah, she does. She's been around. All right, can we agree? Like, we'll just we'll just move on. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, I did not grow up in Saudi Arabia, or I've never been there. I don't know much about Mormons. I grew up in New York City, you guys. Uh, I, I live in Boise now, okay? Um, right? Okay. Thank you very much. I'm not sure why you're applauding. Like, good why? job getting across the country. <laughs> I just woke up, I got drunk and I woke up there. And I just stayed. Because everything was nice. Yeah. So that's what happened. Uh, no, you know what though? I, I, have a, I have a daughter. I'm raising her in Idaho and I'm so happy to be doing so because I feel like she's going to remember her childhood. Uh, if you grow up in a big city, then you probably know this. Everything happens like all at the same time. You have no chance to catch your breath. Like, I know she's gonna remember like her first day of school. She'll remember the first time she holds hands with a boy, her first kiss, all that kind of stuff. That doesn't happen to kids in New York City, okay? When you grow up in a big city, like you watch little kids, if you've ever visited a big city, they get rolled down on the street, little strollers, and traffic just going by. And everyone's like, yeah, fuck your phone, you fuck around, fuck your right, I'm just fuck around. to kids when they're born in New York or a big city it doesn't happen anywhere else like you know how when kids are born like their little eyes are closed and their little hands are closed and they, they slowly open they kind of blossom like flowers you know when little kids from big cities like when their little hands open one finger just kind of comes up a little sooner than the rest of them <laughs> because you need that shit to survive you know and, and we were still innocent and in my let us walk to school by ourselves 11 blocks. I was seven, my sister was nine. I'm not even kidding. Same guy, same street corner, paper bag, just good morning, here's my dick. That happened. I'm not even kidding. We thought that was the crossing guard. I'm not even crossing around. I don't know how your poem over you're like, cross on the balls, not in between. Cross on the balls, not in between, right? Because if you stepped out and the light hadn't changed, just boop, he teabagged you. That's embarrassing in the cafeteria. She doesn't know the difference between green and red. <laughs> There's a good chance she's colorblind. <laughs> it's true. I was uh, I was overweight as a kid. I was fat. I was. I weighed 200 pounds when I was 13 years old, guys. Thank you. You just erased like 10 years of therapy, right? Oh. Yeah, no, I did. I was, I was a very overweight kid. Uh, and I'm really happy 
uh, that it seems like people are, are much more about body positivity now and, uh, and, and about healthy instead of skinny. I'm really happy about that because, yeah, yeah, right? Isn't that awesome? Like, you can yeah. be, like, what size you feel comfortable at as long as your blood pressure is not messed up and you don't have type 2 diabetes. You don't have to back off the donuts. That's pretty, that's my diet. Don't have to back off the donuts. Perfect. So, uh, but, but I mean, you know, like, they don't hand you cheerleading pom-poms when you look like, at least they didn't back in the 80s. But you know what? Maybe I wanted to be your cheerleader, but they were like, no, no, you're 200 pounds, you're 13. Here are your options. You can play Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> or you can bang ugly guys. Your choice. Whatever you want to do, it's fine. Uh, right? it. I don't know. I bang a lot of ugly guys. I'm not that big of a nerd. I'm sorry. But only if I rolled a 20 on my 20-sided dice. So. <laughs> that was totally a joke for the nerds that play Dungeons Woo! and Dragons in the audience. And yeah, there's my nerds. Yeah. I love you. Mwah. <laughs> Centaurs forever. <laughs> I, uh, I get really upset when I see people picking on a fat person, and it's not because I used to be fat at all. It's because everybody, everybody has a vice. It's just with fat people, their vice shows, so they're at an unfair disadvantage. I'm not kidding. Like, if you're if you're a cokehead, you can be like, oh, dude, I just have allergies. Like, you can make, oh, the fucking swine flu's going around. You can make some shit up, you know? If you're fat, you can't be like, oh, the barometric pressure's low today. That's why I'm looking at the wine. <laughs> so, just, you know, consider what you self-medicate with before you make fun of somebody for their body size, because it's just not cool. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Well, welcome to the meeting. <laughs> My comedy generally tends to walk the line between social commentary and funny, so if you laugh, I know I'm doing comedy, and if you don't, then we'll just cry together and eat pizza later. <laughs> It's fine. I, I got into everything early. I really did. Uh, I started smoking cigarettes when I was 12 years old. And you think that's young to start smoking, but I was ready to smoke cigarettes when I was 12. <laughs> I already had a pack of they have of those bubblegum cigarettes. <laughs> Do you guys remember those? Yeah. yeah. Okay, awesome. how stupid were the adults that were like, oh, that's a, per that's a great idea, here you go, let's market that. Like, <laughs> like that's, you give kids healthy stuff to role play with, because that's what they do, they pretend to be grown-ups. They play with dolls and like, oh, you know, how was your day at work, honey? Like, they do that, you give them Lincoln Logs, Erector Sets, they build stuff. If you give them cigarettes, they're going to stand under a street lamp like, how you doing, sailor? <laughs> Let's see if I can get these tassels going in the same direction. Right there, down. <laughs> and they say that, uh, that, that candy is the gateway drug, right? Or they say tobacco is the gateway drug. I'm sorry, I had a couple. But it's not, it's candy. Candy is the gateway drug, okay? Because you can't tell me there wasn't a cokehead working at the candy factory when the pixie stick was invented. Right? That's a straw and powder. That was so, here's what happened. Somebody at four in the morning went, I got a great idea. That's what fucking happened. Pixie stick. <laughs> right? Or Big League Chew. Do you guys remember Big League Chew? Yeah. Your kids? Yeah. Remember that, right? Woo! Gum shredded up to look like chewing tobacco in a pouch so that you can go, here you go, imitate the worst behavior of your athletic hero. Right? Here you go, just do that. Like, fuck it. Why, where are the Mike Tyson gummy ears? Why don't we just do that? Tiger Woods nine iron fun dip. That'd be really good. Like, wow, this tastes like multiple white ladies. That is so good. He sure is my athletic hero. We should put him on a box of cheeties. Or what? Wheaties. Sorry. Wheaties. I, you know what I really need is I, I really need a, a new athlete to mess up so I can update that joke. That would be good. Um, I did, uh, I did experiment with a lot of drugs when I was a teenager, uh, but I stopped short. Uh, I never did heroin, never did that one. Uh, not because I'm uppity or anything, I, I just don't like to cook. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> I would mess up the recipe, I would. Like, you're supposed to use baking soda, I use baking powder and just have like a heroin cupcake, like, oh, shit. <laughs> that is not gonna fit in the needle. <laughs> then you just have to wait till Halloween and be like, trick or treat, motherfucker, have a good time with that. <laughs> you guys are really messed up. <laughs> I would never do that. It's a comedy show, you guys. I have a child. She is six years old. She just turned six. Thank you. I kept her alive that long. Good for me. Boy. Lucky girl. I feel like I'm not going to give you a follow-up question on that comment. Yeah, she's six years old. Uh, I was not planning on having kids, you guys, but uh, some guy from Caldwell forgot to pull out, and I got a job I didn't apply for. So. Uh, <laughs> She's awesome. I look. I love her, and uh, and I do sometimes complain, um, and especially as a comedian, because I've been doing this for 18 years, you guys, and uh, and, I've been, and I've had no filter for longer than I've had a filter, and I feel like when I just start talking about just the angst part of being a parent, that. People get a little judgy about it, and I don't feel like that's okay. I don't feel like it's fair, because parenting and being a parent is amazing, but it's also kind of horrible in some ways, too. And the bad parts is what makes the good parts seem so good, so don't take that other side away from me. You know what I mean? Like, I should be able to have both sides and have it be okay. I should be able to say, like, my daughter is the best thing that ever happened to me, but she killed my career and gave me hemorrhoids, right? And nobody should call CPS, you know what I mean? Like, like she fills my life with joy every day. Also, my tits look like somebody just finished icing a cake. That's real. That's a real thing. Uh, it's, it, they used to be really perky, like, hey guys, what are you doing? And now they just sort of look at the floor and shuffle their feet. <laughs> I'm good. I'm glad you think it's funny. That's awesome. Laugh it up. Good. I would like to laugh with you, but since I had her, if I laugh too hard, I'm kind of pee a little. So that's what I'm doing. Oh yeah. So <laughs> it's a thing, you guys. It's a thing. It's a real thing. It was hard uh, going from being a single 37-year-old woman to infant. That was that was difficult. The day I gave up my box of wine and traded in for a box of diapers. <laughs> Sad day. What they need is a box of diapers with a wine dispenser. <laughs> Some for you and some for me. Perfect. One more sweet ass no But uh, yeah, uh, in a way it was kind of familiar because, you know, I had her and then uh, I brought this person home who just babbled incoherently and defecated all over the place and was really expensive and just puked on themselves. I was like, this is a lot like my alcoholic roommate in my 20s. So. <laughs> Kind of the same. You have to do a lot of stuff you don't want to do when you're a parent. A lot of stuff you don't want to do. I'm always talking about going to the bathroom by yourself. My daughter is finally, finally at the point where I, like, it's like, for the first five years, I did I couldn't take a crap by myself. I couldn't. I had a, I had a daughter, like a little kid, and then two dogs. Wait, so there's no the privacy, and it's, 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 right? It's because you can't close the door when you have a little child because you have to listen to make sure that you don't hear the noises you're not supposed to hear. But even if you did shut the door, some privacy alarm goes off in their head anyway, so they're like, hey, what's going on? And then the two dogs follow like those slow kids from high school, like, ooh, what's going on? Right? You know exactly what's going on here because you came in for that very reason. They come in like shit sommeliers, like, hmm, you know what I'm saying? next to the toilet and throw so that I could at least wipe by myself without feeling like I was gonna get a scorecard. Like, oh, 6.5 from the Russian judge. Well, fuck you, that was clearly an eight. <laughs> I'd have to say the worst thing so far I did was go to a five-year-old birthday party. Ugh, you guys. Who has kids in here? By a round of applause. Okay. Or just raise your hand. Just make up your own rules, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, because really, like, you go to it, and if you go for the kids, you do it for them, right? But then you get there, and they all, like, oh my god, and they all run off together.
together, and then you're like stuck in the worst group blind date ever. Like, and the only thing you have in common with the other person is that you all fucked at relatively the same time and got pregnant, and that's your launching point for the conversation. That's it. You're like, oh, you guys fuck in October, us too. Good job. Yep. And then you just compliment each other on your shit. Like, I like the way your kid runs on his toes. That's it. You want some green cake? Like, that's that's what you have. And indoor play places, you guys ever go to those? Oh god. My god. If anybody ever, like, like at the mall, you know, where they have the little places where all the kids play and it's all covered in boogers and snot and like, ugh. Oh. No, yeah, yeah, you know what? If someone's like, oh hey, you want to go to the indoor play place? That conversation should go like this. Hey, uh, when was the last time you had diarrhea for a week? How's that sound? Does that sound good? Alright, I'll meet you at the indoor play place. Let's do that. Epitigo? Let's fucking whooping cough. Let's hope for that. Mm, yeah. Let's do it. Oh god. No, it's true. I have to look at the I have to look at my notes. Such a, it, I'm a, such a burnout, you guys. No, I, I, it, it is what it is. I don't know if it's all good, but it is what it is. And between then and there, I actually forgot what the next bit was. So that, <laughs> I'm just going to keep this here, and I'll just pull it out whenever I need to. There you go. So I, so I had that moment recently, you guys, where I realized I might be failing as a parent. Yeah, I'm sure every every human being that has a child is like, oh my god, I think I'm failing. <laughs> All right, so I had some stuff I needed to do in the house, so I put. Okay, here's the deal: if they're shushing you and not me, there's a problem. Okay, so like, just mm, we're, we'll talk after the show. I'm I'm actually staying here in this beautiful lodge, right? so I'm hanging out, you guys. So if you want to talk, we can talk after the show. It'll all be, and it's really homey in here too. And I know that because when I went to the bathroom, I was like, shit, I gotta change the laundry over. Here. <laughs> so, right? Shut the fuck up, I didn't So I had this moment where I realized I think I'm failing her as a parent. Because I, I had some stuff to do around the house, so I said, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put her in my bed and put the TV on. So I did that. I go in the, in the living room. I'm, I'm getting stuff done. And I hear going, Mama, Mommy, Ma, Mama, right? It goes on for like two minutes, but she doesn't sound distressed. So I'm like, okay, it's probably fine. It's probably not a problem. I'm not running in there. I'll wait till she comes and finds me, which she didn't do. Stopped after a couple minutes. And then I got curious, so I walked in there, and she was like, Mama, I was calling for you. I was like, yeah, I know, I heard you. She's like, well, I can't find the remote. <laughs> right? That's not the worst part. The worst part was she was sitting in the middle of the bed, and right here, on the nightstand, not covered by anything, the remote. So what that tells me is that it didn't occur to her to turn her fucking head to the spine. <laughs> She's not gonna make it, you guys. <laughs> She's not gonna make it. That's crossing the street 101, okay? Turn your head! Ah! She's gonna get by a car. Looking for the remote control. That's what's gonna happen. Fucking sad. I'm just saying. So now she's into this part of her childhood where I uh, realized that um, it's kind of tricky because parents lie, right? Parents lie to their kids. Yeah. And, and in my opinion, the two most important things to being a parent is love your children and be honest with them because you are their anchor for reality in life. You cannot lie to your children, otherwise they're gonna go, oh, I'm doing this full of shit, right? <laughs> you have to be able to be honest with your kids. So where is that kind of, like, where does, where's the line for that? Like the tooth fairy, okay? That's an issue now. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can tell her that. <laughs> First of all, because it's a lie, but second of all, because that is really fucking stupid. <laughs> like, it's 2017, you guys, and we have Google, okay? Like, think about that, because kids get excited about what you're excited about. I don't know what's wrong with the truth there. Like, why Like why can't I just tell her the truth? Why can't I say, like, hey, I'll dress it up. I'll make it exciting. Like, the teeth you have now, those are your practice teeth. Oh, shit, you just got a flexi over here. I didn't ask for, but I'm willing to go with it. That's fine. Sorry. <laughs> 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 right, I just 
I felt like I was gonna have to deliver some poignant message, and I was like, I don't really have one. There's a dick joke coming later, and does that qualify as poignant? I don't know. Uh, no, like, why can't I tell her the truth? Why can't I say the teeth you have? No, those, those are your practice teeth. Practice taking good care of them. There's weird shit going on. Here, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Going on? Practice taking good care of them. When they fall out, you're gonna get your very own set of professional teeth. <laughs> I think that's way better than the little bear is gonna fly in the window and leave a dollar on your bill. Like, at least that's based in reality. You know what I mean? Like, get, get a NASCAR jacket and put tooth patches on it. Make it exciting. Like, do, you know, yes, a tooth fairy. Woo, that's exciting. Like, practice teeth. Like, you, no, like that's just weird. Like, and the tooth fairy is a weird. Like, that's the recycling bum of Fairyland. Like, that's a weird. Like, I need some teeth. That's weird. Anyway, uh, but. I mean, if you're not gonna do that, like teach community service. Like take her to a shelter, find a crackhead, give him a dollar and a tooth, because he probably needs both. Right? 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 right. He'll pop it in and be like, now I can eat an apple. Like that'll be exciting. Oh my god. <laughs> Super weird, you guys. <laughs> I don't know. Santa? That's another weird one. I, it's just hard to get behind. I don't know. There's a giant fat man. <laughs> but when you go to sleep, he's gonna sneak into the house. <laughs> he's gonna get you to like him with presents. And, uh, I don't know. I've seen a lot of Law and Order SVU, you guys. I'm just saying. <laughs> That story is at the police station with a doll, like right here. And this is oh, no. Santa does ride in a sleigh. He's got a van with tinted windows. It's parked outside your kids' daycare center. Just, ah! Don't do it. Yeah, yes, Chomo. Which yeah. is different than YOLO. Totally. <laughs> totally different. <sighs> Guys, it's been a weird life so far. I, uh, I don't consider myself a very smart person, but I think I'm intelligent. And the difference is this. Uh, intelligence, if you, it's a computer, that's like the processing power of your computer. And, and smart's just data. It's just facts that you know, you know? Um, but I, I mostly don't consider myself so smart because I, I, dr I dropped out of high school in my second freshman year. So uh, <laughs> that happened. My parents were cool with it uh, because they let me join my dad's magic show. <laughs> Because they came from this magical time called the 60s, and they were like, oh, you know what, I'm just go fuck it, join the magic show. And I did, I did. My dad was a professional magician, and, uh, and so I, uh, when I was 14, I went on the road with him, and we closed our show with a trick where he would tie my hands behind my back with handcuffs, and then, uh, and then I would get put into a giant mail sack. Uh, that's not, not a big testicle, but like the thing you deliver the mail in, right? Like a big, and then I would get tied up, and then I get put inside a big trunk, and then they put a lid on it, and then there would be padlocks and ropes and stuff, and then he'd jump up on top of the box and throw a curtain in the air. And when it came down, it was me on top because I got out of the trunk, right? Pretty cool. So I did that until I was 19 years old, and then, then, then you move on, right? I moved to Vegas. I got a boyfriend. And, well, you know, we were together for a while, and things got a little stale, so we are trying to spice it up to get it just a little bit. And he was like, hey, we should try bondage. And I was like, ugh, I got really burnt out on that because of my dad. <laughs> Relationship right there, you guys. <laughs> so, uh, so here's the thing. Um, I uh, I did magic for for years, you guys. Um, and so I thought maybe it'd be fun if I did some magic tricks. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's, that's her uncle. Sorry, yeah, that's my cousin. No, it's super sweet. Good. So uh, so we'll, we'll conjure here, him here tonight because it'll be really fun. So. Uh, to tell you a story about my dad. It's kind of a sweet story. It's not really comedy. We'll get back to the jokes in a second. So uh, when I was a little girl, uh, I grew up in New York City, like I said, and uh, when you look up in the sky at night, you can't really see very many stars because the city's so bright. So one night there was a full moon, and my dad took me outside, and he showed me the full moon, took me out of the city, showed me the full moon, showed me all the planets and stars, and he said that they're all magic. And I still still believe that to this day. So using this napkin, I'm going to show you a picture of the full moon that I saw that this night. Make to make it a little more interesting for you, a bit more challenging for myself, I'm going to do it 
by making only one tear in this napkin, okay? And, I, and I'm not gonna finish tearing it. If you wouldn't mind, just uh, pinch the pieces here and we'll tear, we'll tear them off together, okay? Perfect, you hold on to those. I'll show you a picture that I made of the full moon. Wow. Here it is right here. Not bad for one tear, you guys, right? Yeah. You see the lady in the moon? Yeah. I say it's the man, mm, fuck that, all right. <laughs> Bitches. All right, no, <laughs> I did see the full moon that night, but when I looked just to the right, I saw the first star of the evening. And you guys know what you're supposed to do when you see the first star, right? Make a wish. You make a wish. I made a wish that night. I wished that I could do magic like my dad, and my wish came true. Ooh. Always on my elbow, in case you're looking for it. But if you let me see that circle, I'll show you what I should have wished for. See, I should have wished for that star because then I can have all the wishes that I wanted and that's for you so you can have anything that you wish for. Thank you. Right? Just a little interruption in the comedy. So when I first got into comedy, I'd been doing magic for about 11 years and all the other comedians made fun of me for it, you guys. And they kind of bullied me out of doing it. So for the last like 15, 16 years, I didn't do any magic in my show because I thought, oh, if, in order to be a real comedian, I just have to say fuck a lot and talk about dicks. Well, it turns out, it turns out you can do both. So, uh, right, exactly. So, so I would like to show you uh, uh, this magic trick that um, that I came up with, and I dedicate this to all the people that bullied me while I was doing magic. So, you guys, do you want to see this? It's a, it's a good trick. Okay. Yes. All right. There it is, right there. Join me on stage. I'd like to do one more magic trick. Um, so, is there somebody brave and not super drunk and mouthy? Right here, Shreddy. <laughs> Perfect. Come on up. Woo! All right, yeah. give her a round of applause and join me on the stage. Uh, and what is your name? Anastasia. Anastasia. This is Anastasia. Everybody. Anastasia. This is everybody. Hi, everyone. Perfect. All right, Anastasia. Are you a poker player? Not really. That's okay. Can you shuffle cards without? Possibly. Okay. We'll we'll see. All right, here you go. Uh, oh, well, first, before that happens, we'll have to. Yeah. Oh, shit, really? Yeah. That is really entertaining. Like, should have been doing this for the last half an hour. <laughs> if you like that, hold on. Oh. Woo! Whoa. Oh, okay, well, hang on. <laughs> oh. I call that portion of the show Lonely Adolescence, you guys. <laughs> if you would shuffle these for me, just mix them up however you want. Doesn't really matter. Just mix them. Yeah. Just, yeah. You want me. No, 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 it's okay. It's all right. Not everybody spends time alone in their room shuffling cards. It's okay. Just me. It's okay. It was either that or do chores, so this is what I chose instead. All right, Anastasia, if you would. As most good card tricks begin, pick a card. I'm gonna pick a card. Perfect. All right, uh, take a look at it. Show it to everyone in the audience. Do not show it to me. Uh, I do have to ask, did you pick a face card or a number card? Numbered. Perfect, okay. Uh, if you take this pen, write your name super big across the face so that everybody can see it in the back. You guys are so quiet right now, I love it. We're excited about this. Good, me too. Look, you're you're natural with this. I'll take the pen. You take the card. Oh, that's awesome. Can you do that again? Just because I'm hiring, so that's right. That is fantastic. So everybody saw the card. Now make sure you look at it too, because we've had issues in the past. Especially when it was mine. All right, and stick it back there. We're gonna put it back inside the deck. 
I'm going to shuffle the cards. I've already rolled up my sleeves. I feel like I have to make these things as obvious as possible because I've never been to Saudi Arabia, you guys. <laughs> I'm going to give you my very empty hand. I'm going inside my pocket. All right, I'm going to take out the card box because it'd be too easy for me to find your card. If I had the cards out, I'm going to put them back inside the box. I'm putting the cards in the box, all right? I'd like you to hold on to these. Just perfect. You are truly excellent at this. Thank you. <laughs> I have a couple of other items to show you that you guys may not be familiar with. As I said, I am from New York City, and I brought along with me um, an apartment there. So, here's what those look like. This one is $900 a month, unfurnished. In case you're thinking about moving there, this might change your mind. Um, Anastasia, can you tell everybody what is in the bag? I'm gonna go with nothing Perfect, there, there is in fact nothing in there. I am going to put these cards inside the bag, making it therefore just a little bit more difficult on myself. And then I'm going to introduce a sharp object. Because when you've had alcohol, you guys, and you're trying to attempt a card trick after not doing it for a long time, why not throw in a skewer? Right? Yeah, this is all we had at my house. We removed all the sharp objects six years ago. This is what's left. All right, Anastasia, you remember your card. You guys remember her card. And hopefully, if I get this right, you'll remember me. And not because I didn't. <laughs> Are you ready? Oh, I missed. Sorry, wrong hole. <laughs> that, that, that's, a, that's what he said. And so that's what she said. that has, still has a completely untouched oh deck of cards, you guys. Thank you very much.